Hello and welcome to the Flower Gold Wizard Channel. We were going to go mining today, but as you can see, the weather is just not cooperating. But I have something seriously awesome in mind for today. Hit that subscribe button. Back in a bit. And here it is. This is going to be legendary. Legendary. Just ask the rig bomb. <laughs> That's right. Well, I got a package from Evergreen Prospectors. Now, he sent a number of items along with this stuff. Uh, I'll go through them a little bit here. He sent me a bag of, of pay dirt here. And uh, he also sent me this cool sticker. Look at that. Straight Coast in Dick's Beer, Dick's Brewing Company. And it came with a with a beer holder here. Chicks love Dick's Beer. <laughs> Fantastic. And he sent me and Rigby some hot sticks. Look at that. Jalapeno pepperoni from Northwest Sausage and Deli. Mm-mm. I've had those before. And he knows I like them. And he sent me another pack. And I thank you, Sonny. Sonny Rico. Now, we also sent this here, this here letter. And we'll give it a read. The time has come. The ultimate panning challenge. There is some regular floor gold, beach gold, a little beach gold button he made. Brass shavings and lead shavings, some of this and some of that. Have fun. Well, I always have fun panning out stuff people send me. And so does Big Rig Bomb. Well, we're going to do something a little bit different today. Well, if memory serves correctly... That letter said, Ultimate Gold Panning Challenge. Well, sir, I accept said challenge. I'm going to do one better. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do my best with a pan and a couple classifiers to get all the gold I can out of that material. I'm going to time myself. And when I'm done, I'm going to write down the time. I'm going to dry all that material back out. And I'm going to stick it back in that container it came with. And I'm going to stick that in a flower gold wizard bag. And I'm going to ship it off to another member of the gold prospecting community. And you can do your best to try to beat my time. Let's begin. All right, we've got our bag of material. We've got a couple of pans and some classifiers laying around here. And I've got my clock set to straight up 12 o'clock. Go! <laughs> All right. So I'm going to drop this camera down right here give it a little spin we're gonna do a little classifying hopefully i don't rush through and miss too much stuff let me get this stuff right in here and we'll see what's in this here well that goes right through that this should be easy this part here i'll dump all that right in there give her a little shake all right and there are a number of uh larger items in there and some of these I recognize right off the bat, like these two right here. You all know what that is. That there is petrified dinosaur crap. You guys out there in TV land think I'm some kind of pervert. You keep sending me dinosaur crap. But I thank you. It's going in the can. My 15,000 subscriber giveaway can. All right, let's continue. I see a number of other uh, bigger items in here, like this one. That's no PBR top. I could smell that. <laughs> and it looks like there's a, a number of pieces of some type of rock or another. It looks like it might be um, uh, possibly quartz. I'm not really sure, I guess. When there's uh, lots of pyrite built right into that stuff. That's pyrite all day long. Look at that. Really cool. There's all kinds of that stuff in here. And then uh, these here, obviously, pyrite, pieces of pyrite. Get those up in close and personal. You can take a look at that. That's some really cool stuff right there. So I'll take the kitchen type strainer device material and I'll put it in this big pan right here. There it is. And we'll put that off to the side. And we'll take a look at what we're left with. Notice how shiny that is. That's, that's a lot of something shiny. <laughs> I think that's pyrite and 
Well, he did say there was all kinds of this and that in there. So I think this is way too much to pan at once. So I'm going to run this again through one more classifier. Let's see what we got here. I have a 50 mesh right here. Let's run that through a 50. Back in a bit. Mm-hmm. Here we go. All right, now if you'll notice, a lot of the material that did not go through the 50 turned out to be little chunks, what looks like little chunks of that whiter material and a lot more of that pyrite. As you can see, I'll grab one of those bigger ones and it looks to be pretty much the same material only in smaller form. I do believe that's exactly what that is. Some pyrite probably mixed with all kinds of iron and <laughs> Whatever else he's trying to do to me here. So I'm going to put that off to the side. And here's the material that did go through the 50 mesh. Now there is quite a bit of it. And it's a lot of, a lot of black sand. Look at that. That's solid black sand. And we'll go ahead and check it, check it for magneticity with my magnet type device here. And we'll give her a little check. Well, there might be a... Might be a piece or two on there that's magnetic. I put that off to the side and try it on this end here. Well, it turns out there's a lot of magnetics. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. All right, well, I'm going to put together a little game plan for how I'm going to deal with this much black sand in a limited amount of time we have. But first, I'm going to grab a beer. <laughs> Let's take a five second pause for station beerification. Uh-oh. Let's try that again. Ta-da! The Fridge of Wonder. Let's grab one of them babies and continue. Back in a bit. All right, we're back in. I think first thing I'm going to do, because I might need this pan right here, is I'm going to pan out this stuff that did not go through the 50 mesh. Uh, none of that appeared to be gold, so I think I should be able to pan this out relatively easily. And as I'm panning that, it really, really turns silver. Let me see if I can get that to focus. That's a lot of silver material right there. Now, it's not gold, and I don't think it's silver. I think most of that's going to be... <laughs> looks like you swept up somebody's... Uh, floor in an iron worker shop or something but that could all be pyrite too i don't get a whole lot of pyrite like this in my area so i think that the gold should settle right through that stuff now it's not it's not light blonde sand by any means it's not just washing right out of there so um there is a little bit of a trick to it but i think i got that pretty close that i can uh Pull that back a little bit, see if there's anything in there. All right, oh, I see gold shining through that stuff. Absolutely, 100%. You can kind of see the difference on the camera there. I'll pull that back a little bit more. Yeah, there's gold flakes showing up right there. And there's lots of them up on top right there. I'll give her a little tap up. See that gold riding, coming right up to the top of that riffle right there? I can probably tap most of that right up and out of there. I'll give her a shake down, see that? That gold went right up and through that stuff. And it uh, looks like there's quite a bit in there and it's really, really flat too. Let me uh, let me flatten that out. I'll tap it up. See all that just walking right up and out of there? Lay her down and pull it back. Look at that. There's all kinds of gold in there. Looks like I'm gonna have to take my time a little bit more than I thought here. Holy cow. Lots of flat, flat, flat gold. All right, let me throw this in my black pan, and then I'll be able to do it a little more comfortably. This, this little teeny baby pan here, it's not the way to go for cleaning up gold, for, at least in my opinion. Back in a bit. All right, this is much easier in this big black pan. I can have a bigger viewing window right here. I can see when some of those uh, flat gold pieces are coming down. I'll just give them a smack, 
give that pan a smack, get them right back up to the top and pull some more of this uh, silver material down. And I'm not seeing any gold coming down with it at all. And there's uh, <laughs> a pretty good amount of gold up in there too. That's some nice looking stuff. And I see a piece of wire gold right there. I'll try to get that separated for you quickly here. But this stuff is relatively easy to pan. Yeah, a nice chunk of wire right there. Ooh, wee, that's pretty. All right. I think a couple more little swirls. And that stuff is out of there. This, I guarantee you, was the, was the easiest part of this challenge. I'll go ahead and snuffer those right on up. And we'll begin on that big pile of black sand. Back in a bit. All right, now I think what I'm going to do is I want to use this great big huge mine lab pan to process all that black material, all that black magnetic sand, etc. So I want to get rid of this uh, stuff that did not go through my kitchen type strainer device. Now I've got all the, the um, larger material pulled out of there right over here. No sense of panning that. And I'll brief, briefly pan this stuff back. It should be relatively easy, I think. <laughs> and absolutely, look at all that stuff. I mean, it's just solid pyrites in there. That is just crazy. How do you get anything done out there when you gotta look at every darn rock you find out in the wilderness? Jeeps, these things will fool you. So I'll pull this stuff back and it is, I mean, if that was gold nuggets, that stuff would definitely would not be moving this easy. And so a number of these flakes are relatively flat, as you can see, and they are fairly light. So we're getting it pulled back. There's a couple pieces of quartz in there with some more of that pyrite built into it. So let me, oh, there's, I see a big gold flake in there. Let me get some of this. Some more of this pulled back. What's that? Oh, look at that. When I tap that back, this piece right here in particular, that must be that gold button he was talking about. Now, it doesn't look very gold right here, but when I tapped it, it flipped a little bit, and on the other side, it's gold. How cool is that? A little gold button, and then there's a gold flake right there. Unless that's brass. <laughs> Let's take a little look at that. Ooh, I think that's brass. I do believe that's exactly what that is. Sure. That's a piece of brass right there. No matter. Let's tap all this stuff up. I'm going to hang on to that brass just in case. <laughs> all right, let me get this processed and we'll pick it back up in a minute. Back in a bit. All right, now we're gonna begin panning this black sand right here. That's a pretty good pile right there. I do a lot of mining on uh, the beach at Lake Superior up here by me, and that's the toughest black sand to pan, in my opinion. Um, bla all black sand is tough, but it's, it's tough. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit at a time with this here magnet and dump it in my pan and pan it. Let me grab a little bit of that. That's quite a bit right there, quite a bit. And it looks like I have to add a little surfactant. Let's get down in there, there we go. See that, that just sank everything. So now I'll push this off, off to one side like here. And it's ideal to use a great big, huge wide bottom pan like this because you get more material being uh, worked over by this water and you can pull more of that worthless black sand off of there at a time because this is going to take a long time now i'll do this real quickly one time just to see what kind of gold's in this stuff and i, I guarantee you that magnet picked up uh, some gold along with all that black sand and absolutely up in these up in this top edge here it's incredibly hard to see this is incredibly small gold here so it's going to take me just a minute to form a line on this stuff. See if I can get some of that tapped up. Sure I can. All right. See all that right there? That's what you call flower gold. And there's lots of it in here. So I'm going to set up my stool. Get comfortable because this is going to take a while. Back in a bit. Well, I'm going to take another fiver. I'm going to have one of these delicious hot sticks. 
Uh, unfortunately, Rigby can't join me. The vet said he was getting a little chunky, so he's on a diet. What do you think of that, Rigby? <laughs> oh, okay. Poor fella. video update all right i've got all that black sand in there that was magnetic gone through and panned and i am accumulating a nice little nice little pile of gold in the bottom of this here snuffer all right as you can see that's some fine fine beach gold and this is what's left this is all that's left out of that stuff that's not magnetic it looks to be about a big tablespoon or so so i wanted to turn the camera on and uh you know do this live just to see how much gold beach gold i'm assuming is in this last little bit here that's not magnetic i'll give her a little swish around like such and we'll pull some of that back quickly and there's all kinds of uh silver pyrites and i'm probably some uh mica in there i would think but i'm gathering that there's going to be tons of gold at the bottom and there is look at that stuff showing up at the top all that micro fine stuff up there well that's gold this stuff is loaded with it i think i dumped too much in there i'm gonna have to take some of this back out of there and start again back in a bit and here's the gold. That stuff was absolutely powder, powder fine when I got down to the bottom. And I'm going to be honest, I did not get all of this absolute micro powder fine stuff out of that material. It is incredibly, incredibly hard and, and uh, small. I'm not even 100% sure that is gold, but it, it acts like gold. I don't know where he got that stuff. Now I've got my macro lens right here. I'll throw it on the on the phone here, my camera. We'll take a look at some of these bigger pieces. Look at that one right there. Very, very handsome. Here's that button he went and made. He said he made that out of beach gold. It takes an awful lot of beach gold to make a button like that. There are a number of other nice looking pieces in here. But the majority of this material is absolute powder flower gold. But that's what we do around here at Flower Gold Wizards. So let me get this stuff on my furnace over there. And we'll dry it out. See what we wind up with. Back in a bit. Well, here it is. Here's all that gold all dried out on my furnace. There's a little tiny weeny bit of little silver sand or something in there but i'm going with it i'm i'm beat <laughs> let me get this all scooped down to one end one edge here i can get it on my scale we'll take a little look all right we'll turn that puppy on get the light off so you guys can see the numbers looks like it teared out nicely I'll do it again there we go all right i want to weigh that little button first let's see what that is Ooh, look at that 0.48 that's a tiny little button that's half a gram right there let's dump the rest of this on there oh yeah listen to that stuff plop on there uh, look at there 1.67 grams uh, like i said there's just a touch of of sand in there but i think we got um darn near pure gold in there so that's what we're calling what we got. 1.7 1. 1. we'll call it. Let me shake the table again here once. 1.7. Back in a bit. And we got it. 1.7 grams. I want to give a special thank you to Sonny Rico at Evergreen Prospectors for sending me the Ultimate Gold Pan Challenge. It was tough, but it was fun. And we did it in roughly two and a half hours. It was a great time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to dry out all that material, put the gold back in it, and I'm going to put it back in this bag, and then I'm going to put it in this bag. And so it begins. The ultimate gold pan challenge. 
I challenge Adam at California Gold Rush. I'm going to send this stuff over to you, and I want you to see what you can do in two and a half hours. I got 1.71. Now, I know you went out there in the East Coast, you're familiar with some pretty small gold, too. But you've been traveling out to California, getting all those big nuggets. You're getting spoiled a little bit. Let's see if you still got it, buddy. So until the next episode, like, share, subscribe. Please do leave a comment. It helps build my channel. Flower Gold Wizards out. Oh.